Now they're on our turf. They think they can push us around on our field, on our homecoming. Guess what? It ain't happening, boys. Heck no! It ain't happening! edition of West Side Elite. I'm Ryan Terpstra, State Champs Network, Alan True from Scout.com. We're here to recap and give you news about what's happening on the west side of the state of Michigan when it comes to high school football. We're going to start with a game that I was at. We made it our main event last week, uh, Alan, and the OK Red has been an interesting division so far this year. It's going to continue to be interesting as Hudsonville ends up de defeating East Kentwood. They come back from 13 points down. They're able to beat the Eagles. I know this is a bit of a surprise to you, sir, because you saw EK beat Farmington Hills Harrison. They are a perplexing team at some points. Yeah, they have a lot of athleticism, a lot of firepower, um, but I guess, you know, there's a little bit of a consistency issue there. They haven't played up to the same level they have against Harrison. Hudsonville's a tough team. I actually think I saw them in maybe their worst game this year. They're only lost to Zealand East this year, so that uh, result surprised me a little bit. But Hudsonville's always very tough, very well coached, and I think it just shows that that conference this year anybody can eat, beat anybody on almost any given week yeah, it's going to be interesting because East Kentwood plays Rockford now and it would seem that Rockford and Hudsonville would be the two teams that are in the driver's seat but if EK upsets them then who knows what's going to happen plus you've got Granville that can certainly beat somebody on any given week so Hudsonville and Rockford seem to be the ones to watch in here but a lot can happen down the road Speaking of conference matchups that are important in this week, we'll have a camera at this game. It's going to be in the OK Blue, where Grand Rapids West Catholic, once again doing what West Catholic is, basically playing a playoff game every week as their out-of-conference schedule left them with a little bit of an uphill climb. But they're fighting for the OK Blue with Comstock Park, who's having a great year, Alan. Also hung with Zealand West, and I think really, with a loss, proved themselves to a lot of people. Yeah, I think that was one of those times where, like you said, the loss actually uh, heightened some people's opinion of them because of the way they played Zealand West. They have a couple of real playmakers over there, very experienced senior quarterback, a uh, running back that can make a whole lot of play, a whole lot of play. So that's not going to be an easy one for West Catholic this week at all. No, I'm excited to see Pat Naughton. I remember watching him as a sophomore. He had a great year for Comstock Park. Last year, a little bit more forgettable as the team struggled a little bit. But as a senior, he's definitely one to watch and a guy that could be playing at the next level somewhere on Saturday next year. Also, speaking of Zealand West, who beat Comstock Park, they're only lost so far this year. They've got a big game in the OK Green against Byron Center. And I know we'll have a write-up on statechampsnetwork.com about that. And so also, down in the Kalamazoo area, another game that we'll have a camera at is Portage Central, maybe the best team in the Kalamazoo area in their annual rivalry game against Portage Northern. And Northern brings in a college-level prospect as well, Alan. Yeah, just started to hear about him this week. Eric Coley, who plays quarterback for them, athlete kind of guy at the next level, probably six foot, 175 pounds, has some speed, will come up and hit you on the defensive side of the ball. I know Portage Central's game plan is going to be a lot, it's going to be built around containing him and especially his mobility in and out of the pocket. Definitely. So that'll be a great game. Make sure you tune into State Champs to see that one as it's going to be kind of a, a power level. And, and Central made a really nice run in the playoffs last year. I believe they lost to Muskegon in a very close game. So they are looking to make another deep run again this season. Now, no official offers like there were last week, Alan, but lots of recruiting buzz. I know that that Rockford East Kentwood game will have some people that uh, different college scouts want to see and then also some other news. So fill us in. Well, Rockford quarterback Jason Whitaker is only a sophomore, but he's starting to pick up a lot of interest and rightly so. The kid's very talented, big, strong arm. He visited Central Michigan over the weekend. Penn State, who has a commitment from his teammate, Quinn Nordine, uh, they're very interested in Whitaker as well. I think a lot of schools are going to end up recruiting him. Nate Omar from Allendale is another one who's starting to pick up more interest. He's visited a bunch of schools recently, Illinois, Iowa, Michigan. He's been to a lot of those. Uh, uh, recently as well, Greenville tight end Keegan Cousseau, who we've mentioned a couple of times, he visited Illinois, or he's going to visit Illinois, sorry. Uh, they recently came in and showed him some interest, so that could be his first Big Ten offer right there. That would be pretty big for him, so we'll keep you up to date on all those news. Of course, if you follow, an Al follow Alan True on Twitter, at Alan True, you can get all the latest news from Scout.com as well. And uh, some love to a West Side Elite alum last week. We talked about Willie Sneed. He went out and was one of the top receivers for the New Orleans Saints. This week, we'll recognize another great performance this past weekend, and that's Desmond Morgan, native of Holland. Uh, he went to Holland, West Ottawa. Uh, 
played quarterback and linebacker. Of course, he was always going to be thought of as a linebacker, but that kid was a load when he played quarterback for Alan Westado. I know both you and I covered a lot of his games, Alan. Yeah, as a junior, he played fullback, and that's why I think the recruiting attention was a little bit slow. Once he switched over to quarterback and was running a lot of Wildcat stuff, that's when the interest really started to come in. Michigan didn't offer him until, I think, about this time in his senior year, so that's a, a little bit of a silver lining for some of those seniors out there that are still waiting, too. Desmond Morgan did not have an offer from a Power 5 school until late October, and it ended up being a very smart decision by Michigan. Absolutely. The best defensive player for them on the field against Maryland. Congratulations to Des. Funny story, and you'll be able to watch this on the video, but uh, I covered their game against Muskegon Desmond's senior year, and the little running back that they had got hit so hard he took my legs out, and you can see me go down on the ground getting trucked by West Ottawa. So I always remember covering Des Morgan because that's also when I got destroyed on the sidelines and, and it was caught by all the other TV stations put on YouTube and I'm forever. But uh, you showed you can take yeah, a hit. I did. I bounced right up, back up. up. I bounced yeah. right back up and I will, uh, I'll I'll have that feather in my cap for a long time. So remember, you can always follow us on Twitter. As I said, at Alan True. You can also follow me at Turp himself. State Champs Network, we're your home for news. Go to at State Champs Net if you want to see the latest there. And remember, West Side Elite, every week where we recap what's going on on the west side of the state of Michigan. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the download, and we'll see you next week.